My name is Trini Culberson Smith, and I have the blessing and honor of working with our student ministries here at Creekwood, and I'm so happy to be here with you this morning. Will you pray with me? <laughs> Loving God, we thank you for your presence in this place, for the ways that our hearts and minds are opened when we worship together. Let us be filled by your spirit, by song, by love for you. And upon leaving this place, let it pour out to all others that we meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. There are so many joys that come with being the Director of Student Ministries. And the summers are some of my very favorite because there is not much that does not happen during the summer. We travel lots of places, we get to meet new people, and there is always an adventure around every corner. I have not seen a lot of you in a while because I have been on some of those adventures. In fact, just last weekend, we returned from Shiprock, New Mexico on our high school mission trip. And it was an incredible experience, so much so that when I looked back, I had we began planning for a sermon at weeks in advance and start reading through scripture when David told me that I would get to preach and share with you all today. And I started kind of writing a sermon in my head. And then I went on a mission trip and I came home with a new one. We love how God works that way. When you begin planning trips, like mission trips with lots of students, there is a lot of planning. There is so much planning that one could probably get lost in it. Decide when you're going to travel, what you're going to travel in, what wonderful saintly adults are going to travel with you? How many and which students are going to come on the trip? Which students will then switch off and not be able to go on the trip and new students will come? This is all things that happen before you leave for a trip. And I didn't realize how much I got caught up in planning until these new things start happening and you realize you know, you've got to roll with the punches too. So we worked on a Navajo reservation and stayed there for the entire week. Uh, it's called Four Corners Native American Ministry that we worked through, and we got to spend a lot of time with Navajo people. We learned an amazing phrase that you will hear a lot of our students use. Um, parents and family that have already heard this know that it's not an excuse to not be working, but Navajo time is something that you might start to hear. We learned a lot about Navajo time. We worked with a man named Calvin who works with Four Corners Native American Ministry. He is in charge of all the construction that mission teams get to come and do on these excursions that they take to the reservation mission trips. And Calvin, we were starting to set up our, our work schedule and we planned to drive in on Saturday and work on Sunday. Because you drive in and then you start working, right? No, Sunday's an off day. It was Father's Day, and it's worship day, you don't work on Sunday. So Sunday, we ended up having the day off. So we came up, had our team, we got to worship at Shiprock United Methodist Church. And the first thing that we were told was to rest. We had we met a great man named Franklin who had worked with mission teams for years and years, and he met our team in the parking lot before we even walked into the church. And he was introducing himself to students, and the students are preparing um, to hear wonderful things from him about uh, how hard they're going to get to work and things they're going to get to do. And Franklin looked at them and said, make sure you rest this week. Make sure you drink water this week. Make sure that you spend a lot of time at the dorm this week and enjoy each other's company. And some of the students smiled and nodded, and some kind of giggled and others looked at each other, and just one panicked. <laughs> what? We're on a mission trip. <laughs> what do you mean rest? I had one student that we had to follow him around with a bottle of water to get him to rest because he doesn't do that. But it was funny for us to plan this trip, all the details, planning on working, and the first thing that we're asked is to make sure that we don't forget to rest. And then we started hearing about now time. We walk into the church for worship, the church is empty. The pastor comes up and introduces himself to our group. It's now about three or four minutes after worship should start, the church is still empty. 
the pastor does his greeting and his prayer and calls out the fact that the church is still empty and says, oh, you'll learn. This is Navajo time. By the time we sing a couple more songs and have another prayer, and about the time I start the sermon, people will start to show up. He was right. That's exactly what happened. And it was like that a whole week. And we realized that it wasn't just a start things later or trickle in when you want, but it's because relationships are more important than a schedule ever could be to the Navajo people. And this lesson was one that we learned over and over again while working on the reservation. Because if you're having breakfast with your family and you're having a really good conversation and you're hearing things about your kids' week that you haven't heard yet, well, don't get up and go to church. They stay and finish the conversation and show up to church after. It's a very different way of doing things from us that let the calendar and the clock move us along to get everything done that we have to finish. So we began to notice this on the, the work sites, lots of different ways, when we began working. Uh, one of the first projects that we worked on, I've got a picture for you, um, this man's name is Harry, and he lives in this little house. It might look familiar to you as far as size. Some of you might have some in your backyard that you use as a storage shed. That is exactly what it is. Here we used to roam around, and they were able to give him this residence on his family's property so that he can have his own place to call home. And the worship team before us, you can't see it in this picture, but they added an addition to the back of this little shed, this home, so that he now has a bedroom. So he has a house, he has a bedroom. His house doesn't have running water, doesn't have electricity, but it shelters him from the sun. And we worked on mudding and taping the drywall to finish his bedroom and insulating the roof from the walls so that when it snows, he will not get wet. This was a whole new eye-opening experience of not only the things that we are gifted with, but the way of looking at the world around us. Because even here, the little that he said, he doesn't talk a whole lot, but he came out when he was visiting with our group. He even would ask about our water and our shade and ask me if we were comfortable, if we were okay. There are no trees. Harry lives at the top of a very large hill that overlooks Shivra. And there's not any shade. And he's sitting in an old car in his front yard to have shade himself and making sure that we were okay. One of the next projects that we did is we hauled a lot of wood. A lot of wood. Um, these girls are strong. That thing, I can't tell you how much that weighs. <laughs> they wouldn't let me touch it. It was probably the third day that we were, second day, that we were hauling wood that Calvin, who's pictured in the hat here, um, he was our, our construction guy. We were tossing it in this pile, and groups would volunteer, whoever was not in the shower yet at the dorm would volunteer to, to come and haul this wood off, and we threw it in this pile. The next picture is a, a group picture, and you can see just next to this wood pile, there's a little fence, and it doesn't look like much in this picture. To tell you the truth, it isn't much in real life. But this fence covers, from public eye, one of the most sacred things on the reservation. And it's called the sweat lodge. The reason we were dumping wood at this place that we just thought was trash from these homes that we were working at was so that the next week they could have their ceremonies at the sweat lodge where they chant and sing and pray and connect with the spirit to invoke healing for those dealing with abuse or addiction or illness. And that's how they connect with the spirit to help invoke healing, to help people. So we just think that we're dumping off trash. And Calvin tells us, no, I want to get a quick picture in front of the sweat lodge, something that we as non-Navajo are not even really allowed to see or get near. And we are able to hear about 
the healing power that's going to come from this wood that we hauled off of, of someone's property. We moved as Calvin told us that week. We learned that Calvin's plan kept changing. And Calvin would tell us that it wasn't Calvin's plan, it's just whatever we were supposed to do that day. And he talked a little about the spirit moving and not the time and how you just kind of have to go with the flow. Would you be surprised if I told you that our group might have had a hard time with that? <laughs> I know that some of you might have had a hard time with that. Just going with what happens. You know, when I read the scripture this morning from Exodus, and are, we're reminded of the Israelites, Molly made a really great point about how everything is instant now. If we want to go somewhere, pull out our phone, ask Siri, or punch it into Google, and we go. And you just do it. And we utilize all of our time doing things. And I don't know that I realized how much we as a people don't rest until we kind of had to this week. We weren't given work to do. We're at this dorm on the reservation in the middle of Shiprock, New Mexico, which is, I'm from East Texas, and I'll tell you it's the middle of nowhere, right? It's like, there's nothing out there. <laughs> so we sat, and we rested, and we enjoyed each other's company. But thinking of the Israelites, you know they had work, and families, and jobs and things, like we do. But because they had been led out of slavery, of Egypt, of terrible things by God, they relied on that so much that when they saw that that spirit was on the tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies, in the worship place, they didn't move. It didn't mean they didn't have work. It didn't mean that their families weren't there and there weren't things to take care of other places. But they trusted and relied on God so much that they didn't go unless the Spirit was moving. And I'll call myself out here, not just you, we're so bad about stopping, about resting. If I ask you to name a list of everything you accomplished this week, I might have to stop you in five minutes, but if I asked you the last time that you didn't have anything on your plate or that you sat still, we might struggle to answer that. I'm preparing a sermon on this very topic, and last night I was called out by my dear husband. It's after dinner, and I'm repacking my camp suitcase as we leave this afternoon for counselors to for probably the third time, and I'm going back through and making sure I have what I need, and I've got the laptop with my sermon on it sitting next to me, and Josh walks in, hands me a fishing pole, and says, let's go. I'm packing. He's not. <laughs> but, but I'm packing, and I have a sermon, and I have, and he just pushes the fishing pole closer to me. No, let's go outside. And I'm realizing on the walk down the stairs, out to the pond where we live, that I'm preparing a sermon about how we have to rest and we have to follow God. But I'm so busy preparing all the things that I do during the summer as a busy youth minister that I'm not even doing that. And I realize how important of a thing this is for us to talk about. We trust in God like the Israelites do. We rely in God like the Israelites do. But sometimes we get so busy and so tied up with everything else that we do that we don't rest. And sure, we do it. We keep moving. We keep going. But don't you know where all of your limits are? And don't you see them in the rearview mirror because you keep moving past them? We do a lot of things. We give to other people. But sometimes the stopping thing doesn't work well. And you'd think, oh, rest is good. 
We want to rest. But I think the truth is that it's uncomfortable. You know how to do your jobs. You know how to take care of your kids. Students, you know how to do your schoolwork. You know how to get things done. You have tons of extracurriculars and you're always doing things. I'm shocked at how often we see our students here at church to do things here because I know that they can be 500 other places. And we're so good at cramming all these things in that we sometimes forget that to truly give all of us and to truly mentally and spiritually and physically prepared for something that we have to rest and we have to be poured into to pour out. Going back to some pictures, this is one of my favorites we took on the entire trip. This was our last day. This was the weirdest mission trip schedule that I've ever had. And I've even been to Shiprock before. But this one was different. Drove up straight there on Saturday. Had a day on Sunday to just explore. Get to know Shiprock. Visit with a lot of local people. Go to worship there in the reservation. And we worked for four days. Less than probably we planned to. And then Friday, we had a day to do something that we could enjoy together. And we went to Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. And this actually, I say resting, but this was after a two and a half mile hike. And I'll tell you that the picture is only a little staged, which if you've ever been anywhere with a whole lot of students sitting this close together, and this still does not usually just happen candidly, right? We got done with the hike and I was talking to some of the adults. This is at the top before you walk back to the museum where it started. And I noticed that the kids were starting to plop down on the side of this cliff. Yes, this close together, just about. We only had to ask three to join the picture. Because they were so mesmerized by the view and were so tired by the hike following these days of work that they just flopped. Maybe a little close to the edge, but they just flopped. And they were looking, and I was kind of listening to them, they're watching from afar, and they're pointing things out to each other that they can see in the cliffs and talking about the trees. And if you saw this group on the way to Mission Trip, they were in several different cliques of the people that they know, ones that they often hang out with, and then the vans, you could tell how separated they kind of were into their little friend groups. Now on the way back, I was the bad guy at 4 o'clock in the morning when we left when I told them that we only have 12 passenger vans and they can't all ride together. Some of you have to go over here, but kind of, they're still crammed in the same van because they wanted to be together. <laughs> but when we keep busy, when we keep working, when we don't stop, we don't get out of our patterns enough that we can connect candidly with other people. When you rest together, when you play more card games than you can ever imagine in one week together, you learn silly things about one another. You connect in a different way. And you learn that there not only are things so much bigger than us, but that we have to pour into ourselves and let God pour into us to be able to pour anything out. Now, I thought we did pretty good at resting this week because I know that it was uncomfortable for me and it was uncomfortable for a couple of students since we're used to just going. But our last night there finished our small group conversations, which ended up in a great big group. We all talked together about the things that we learned, some beautiful, heartfelt things were shared, and we had our worship moment. Now I had an adult meeting, as you know, those have to happen, and we were talking about the drive back and who's driving what and all the logistics. And I went right back to work brain, right? Making sure that we had all the details covered. And then I go back in the kitchen, which is the only really gathering space in this dorm. And I only have five students in there. Turn back around and I come back out the door. I'm like, it's just outside. There are five in here. Where is everyone else? So I kind of did a lap around the little fence in the property that's around the dorm. 
and I noticed our students in clusters, just kind of around the property. I told you we just had all of this small group worship time, right? Well, apparently I interrupted it because the kids weren't done. So we had our adult meeting, and the students picked their own places on the, on the property just outside of the dorm, and they were having prayer time with each other, voluntarily. We plan all these things, but I don't think about them just happening when we don't plan for them to happen. They were so filled by the memories of the things that we were just learning, the people that we were able to talk to and learn from, and with the Holy Spirit and feeling love for each other and a brand new community, that I released them for free time and they claimed prayer time instead. Now, I've been doing youth ministry a long time, but I will tell you this is the first time that I can account for that happening just that way. 14 years of youth stuff. That's a new one on me. And it all goes back to this rest. We don't spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, but I so appreciate this road trip series that Pastor David led for us in talking about the Israelites and their journey to the Promised Land. Because we're all journeying. We're all journeying together. And part of being on a journey is resting so you make it. And I want to call out the fact that it's uncomfortable. Because we know how to move. We know how to get things done. We all have expertise. Not all of us rest well. And it might be uncomfortable when we stop. You know why it's uncomfortable when we stop? Because we plan our whole day and we know what's going to happen. Terry Lynn and I can tell you how our staff day works, right? We know what time we have staff meeting and what time we're in the office and what we need to do and how that works. But on a Sabbath day, you don't know what's going to happen. You might really want to check the work email. I have to turn it off on my phone or I won't. You might really want to get ahead for the next day. You might not know who's going to stop by the house and visit with you when you're just home there, right? And we'd rather plan every detail out than not have control of what's going to happen. And that's why we don't rest. The Israelites came from a place that they had no control. They were literally slaves. And they knew that everything good came from God. And that they had to cling to that so much so that if that cloud, that Holy Spirit, didn't move off the tabernacle, neither did they. Now our lives are very different today, but we can learn something from the Israelites. We can remember that rest isn't always comfortable because it isn't planned. But we can also remember that the Holy Spirit is all around us. And even if our rest is five minutes, that we turn off our phone, that we put our brain on pause, that we pick up a fishing pole, we might feel something that isn't planned. Because we can't plan everything. And when we over plan, it gets harder for us to realize what God might have in store for us. I'm so thankful to be able to serve and be a part of the body of this church, of this congregation that gives so freely, so much. I would love to name all the missions that we do, but I don't want to cut into your lunch time because we'd be here till dinner. You do so many things. And as a body, as we prepare to do what we do in worship, to collect an offering, to give back to the ministries of this church and to the greater things that we do, I invite you to also prepare your hearts as the ushers get ready to receive plates. I ask you to take just a second before you dig for what you might be offering. Dig in your heart for just a second. And before you put one more thing in that plate, think about when the next rest time you're going to have will be. 
Are you going to take this afternoon with just your family? Maybe turn off your phone, maybe not check your email. Or maybe you're super busy and later this week you can carve out a Sabbath day or a Sabbath afternoon or a Sabbath morning. And create a space for God to pour so much into you that you didn't see coming, that you can't help but let overflow to those around you. Let us pray over our offering.